Africa is not a country. It is not one big homogenous market. It is filled with thriving and some of the world's fastest growing economies. To find out more, log on to www.africabusinessradio.com. Africa Business Radio, towards a profitable Africa. Are we back? And we are back. Fabulous. That was an awesome song, Linda. It sounded like somebody was reading out an instructional manual for a lawnmower. Holy crap. Really? Out of And it sounded very sexy because it was in French, obviously. So sexy lawnmower manual. Love it. All right. So we, we are here at the BRICS conference in uh, Gallagher Estates. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Africa Business Radio, Facebook Africa Business Radio, hashtag HRY. Drop us an email, info at africabusinessradio.com. And uh, don't forget to download our app on uh, the iStore and the Play Store and the G Store and the Pep Stores. And all those good things, you can take us wherever you are, you can listen on the go, and you can interact with us. We'll really appreciate it. So, our first guest from the show, Professor Rian Stopforth from the United, uh, University of KZN, and Damian Mooney, Nelson Mandela University. Guys, good morning, good morning. Is it morning? It's still morning. Yeah, it's still morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Uh, so, guys, uh, tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing at the show. Do you want to take it? Um, well, at the moment, it's a skills development um, that we're looking at, looking at uh, um, especially youngsters between the age of 18 and 35, uh-huh. and we're trying to uh, see how we can bring drone technology, and it's a new um, concept for Industry 4.0, yeah. and in this way, um, build up skills, get them to collaborate with each other in the, with the different BRICS countries, and it's been really amazing to sort of see how they're able to uh, share their, their knowledge with each other. Um, build on things and um, actually make things work like these in, in terms of these, these drones you know so um, it's been um, a very interesting um, time there's been a lot of challenges it is a future skills challenge one of the skills we have seen um, has been communication as well yeah um, understanding different languages understanding um, different cultures um, and Google Translate has been used a lot. <laughs> I can well imagine. <laughs> can you imagine trying this 10 years ago? It would have been impossible. It would be with the dictionary, and that would have been very, very slow communication. It wouldn't have been a four-day conference. It would have been a four-month conference. Exactly. And I, I, I have to ask the question to both of you. Uh, you guys are talking uh, science and technology and the, the, the fourth wave of industrialization, etc., etc. And South Africa is notoriously bad at maths and science. How does this affect you guys? You, you guys are talking about between 13 and 18 years old. These are the guys that you want to inspire. These are the guys you want to get into the, the sciences and, and to you know take our country forward into the scientific age, into the IT age, into the technological age. And, you know, expand upon that. All right. Well, the interesting thing is about, well, let's say about 25 years ago, South Africa were the, the world leaders when it came to drones, the days of... Pedanel and, and so forth. Um, the rest of the world was actually coming to us. Yeah. Um, I must admit, uh, we, we went through a slump of about 10 years, and for about the past eight years, I'd say, it's grown dramatically in South Africa. In fact, we're actually doing quite well. Um, not many guys know that uh, we've got a couple of groups here, especially in the Johannesburg Centurion area, who are actually making drones for uh, the Dubai area. So a lot of these big new projects that you're seeing on Facebook and going, oh, that's exciting, they're actually made here locally in South Africa. So we're doing very well in that department. You know what? So we skipped a step in this interview. I, I just want you guys to give me a little bit of background about what you guys do. <laughs> you know, you, you told me before the show, I'm going, wow, that's, everybody knows now. So it'll be fantastic. Right. Uh, uh, Damien? Okay. Your specialty? Um, what, what do you guys do? What are you guys up to? Well, I'm actually a contractor with the Nelson Mandela University. In particular, they've got a group called the Mandela Uni Autonomous Operations Group. Um, I'm essentially a commercial pilot background uh, with, the, with drone, uh, how would you say, drone development for the past eight years. Um, what I do uh, for the university is, is, actually let me backtrack a little bit there, about a year ago, uh, none of the universities were putting any major effort into drones, and in particular airborne systems, mostly just because um, re- regulations didn't allow them to. And Nelson Mandela University decided they actually want to they want to be the leaders in the country as far as it's concerned on the research side. Uh, so they, they brought me in to give them a little bit of assistance, and it has just grown tremendously since then. As soon as uh, the likes of Masita and so forth found out that we wanted to do this, the funding has been phenomenal. And as a result, in the past year, we have grown from essentially nothing to quite a productive team. And we've actually 
we've got a lot of our master's students who, who would be doing other projects uh, have actually decided to come across to drones and, and do their master's through us. So. That's fantastic. Before I get on to Orion, and I must, I must uh, latch on to that point about the CETA help, helping you guys out. I, I, it is a 50-50 shot uh, where the funding comes through from any CETA. If it works, it's fantastic. I've only had accolades, but when it doesn't work, it fails miserably. So you guys have had fantastic uh, working relationship with the CETA. Oh, absolutely. I mean, from, from day one, they've been there. And um, like I say, we started wanting to just do uh, airborne systems, what we refer to as, as RPAS systems. Um, but when Masita came on board, they came to us and said, well, listen, actually, we, we're missing quite a bit in this country, uh, underwater drones particularly. That's something that's, that's seriously missing in this country. And then AGV, ground-based vehicles as well. Um, there's no reason why we can't be using these drones on, on farms. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of work we can do on on ground as well so yeah so with with that in mind they, they've they've come to us and said right well these are the three main areas we wanted to cover airborne ground and underwater go for it and yeah what a fantastic, fantastic. year fantastic oh it sounds oh you, you i am absolutely in awe yeah underwater land drones god <laughs> it's it's an absolute dream of mine i'm a little bit of a tech geek which is why i talk for a living uh, obviously. All right. So, uh, Professor Rion, stop forth a little bit about yourself. What is your program? What are you guys up to? Um, yes, I'm from UKZN. Um, been involved with uh, um, drones um, for South Africa. Um, been involved with the Robotics Association of South Africa as well as um, a RASA program, which is a government-funded program as well um, for drone technology. We've um, been exploring um, having to work with different institutions. Um, of which Nelson Delhi University has been one of them and um, it's in terms of developing new technologies application based trying to determine what we can actually um, use these drones for in terms of a real life scenario um, for example there's a lot of research going into a lot of theoretical things and um, but this is more application type of research where we're able to use these drones to be used for example for um, identifying rhino poachers, identifying uh, maybe security yeah. um, issues, different to reach inspection areas. Um, and so basically we're developing that, having to take into account the different regulations um, and that's required for remote pilot licenses and um, using that type of knowledge to guide people that are involved in, in the drone technology sector. I think that the applications are only limited by one's imagination, and, and, and the application, it, it can do anything. Uh, I think there is perhaps a lot of misconception about drones. They're only used to spy on you and kill you from 50 miles up in the air, drop missiles on you. That is not the case. That is, that is probably the, a, a small percentage of drone cap capabilities. You were talking about real life scenarios, and many, many years ago I did an article, and it was unbelievable technology that was in place about drones flying blood samples from rural areas the back blood. to hospitals mm -hmm. right. yes and that was the first time I'd ever heard of this and I, has it grown from there what are the, the, the real life applications that we as Joe public don't know about well the thing is is, is that in South Africa especially um, we've got a lot of regulations that are um, constraining us in, in terms of um, how we can use drones flying over um, suburbs and um, areas where people live um, so it is always difficult to sort of say how those drones can be used yeah. but there is I mean in terms of long distance things like the blood samples um, what about first aid kits you know like you've got a, a, there was a, a, a plane accident a couple uh, about a week ago um, that you had the mountain rescue people having to go you know maybe a drone could go and give them at least some water it could supply them with first aid equipment yeah. that they need to just um, patch up and bench themselves maybe um, there's applications in terms of um, you know um, we could even go and explore in terms of bigger drones such as um, and aircraft as such um, and there's actually scope that where they're going to now sort of have um, commercial airlines which will be flown in autonomously and so um, the, the, that's sort of the where the research is going now yeah let me just jump in the and at, at least you know it won't smoke a joint before it flies Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind what's happening on the ground. Actually, just to jump in on that point, um, you mentioned the, the blood delivery system that, that they, they refer to as Zipline. And that's a very nice system where essentially a drone is given a GPS coordinate. It, it'll, it'll take the blood sample, drop it at that GPS coordinate and come home. So we looked at that as a university and we thought, well, that's not bad, um, but, but can, we, can we improve on that? Can we sort of get artificial intelligence involved in there as well? 
So one of the projects we've, we've got at the moment is, um, sorry, the university in Portland is where we're very involved in, in marine res- research as well, so we've decided to try and combine those two. And they asked us, can we come up with a, a delivery system to ships out to sea? And you thought, well, that sounds sort of easy enough. They said, no, no, no these ships need to still be moving. I thought, okay, but let's see what we can do there. So one of our master's students, I'll do a shout out to him, James Sewell, um, he's been tasked with developing a drone which can take up to five kilograms, take it out to sea, and it initially goes to the last known position of a ship. So the idea is you've got a, a shipping con- a container ship uh, or a, a, um, a big oil tanker. They can't really slow down, but if they need something, they need it. And on a sideline in the old days in the Air Force, we used to fly DC-3s out to the military fly overhead and drop things next to them in the water. They used to pick it up and carry on going. So now we've got an aircraft which actually go out to a known GPS position and then start doing search patterns to actually look for that ship that it's meant to find. Wow. Using image recognition, it'll actually start to read the, the registration on the side of the ship or identify a particular shape which the ship has been asked to put on its deck. Once the aircraft has identified the ship, it'll start orbiting around it, measuring the ship's uh, track, its speed, its direction through the water, and also measuring upper wind speed at the same time. It does a little calculation in, inside itself and uh, then works out pretty much, I use the term very loosely, a, a bombing run trajectory to actually come in and drop the, the payload while still in flight, obviously an aeroplane we're talking about here, drop the payload on the ship, and then basically come home again all by itself. There's no human intervention there whatsoever. So then it goes over to the search and rescue idea. We can actually give an aircraft a coordinate of where we think something's gone wrong, or we think the guys are stuck on the side of a mountain. The aircraft actually gets in with its own cameras, identifies where the people really are as opposed to the original GPS coordinates, and it will work out its own, again, trajectory to deliver the payload to that person on the side of the hill and then come back home again. So let's say it's a zip line with artificial intelligence thrown on top of it. Good Lord. I, I am in awe. I'm, you know what? It's, I love tomorrow. I love the future. It's and brilliant. strangely enough, the future is here today. And as you actually mentioned earlier, we, we, re- we really are embracing the idea of if you can think, <coughs> if you can think it, if we can do it. Yeah. That's great. The whole point of drones is it, it's an integration of, of everything that we're doing in engineering. It, it's, it's, it's the ultimate culmination. It's the ultimate sort of, um, how would you say, uh, uh, part integration we, we do we do electronics we do mechanics we, we do aerodynamics we do computer programming you name it it's all in there and with the the, the sort of the climb of technology what, what is that that curve called a, a steep curve, a a steep curve. exponential curve yeah. exponential curve. thank you the exponential uh, climb of technology over the last oh, 10 absolutely. years has opened up these technology avenues where as you say nothing is impossible now with a bit of thought and a bit of foresight and a bit of uh, Helpful government, perhaps. How far are we from from commercial solutions? I, you know, we we always seeing these adverts where Amazon's going to fly in your front door and drop off a package. Are you going to have a drone land on your roof and drop a pizza for you? Are, are these things? I, I, I can imagine that's talking about the CAA, the, the commercial airline, so civil aviation, the civil aviation authority. Uh, the, the regulations need to be got around there, but are these viable options for the future to, to commercially make these things viable? Well, at the end of the day, I think it's uh, um, it, it, it can definitely happen. Um, the, the, I mean, and that's that's where the, the sort of applic- for the different applications becomes very useful. I mean, once we've got the deployment of let's say a um, for emergency serv- um, equipment to be deployed. You could always then go and say, well, it needs to go for a specific location of a house. Um, it could be using Google Maps to be able to identify the shape of the house and know that once it's on top of it, it's able to deploy your pizza, for example. Um, you could, um, you know, so these, um, there, there are these abilities. I mean, there's also, um, if you look at um, more your um, Dubai and those areas, you sort of hear that there's these drones that are actually transporting people, giving them lifts from different points, like an Uber system. Yeah. And um, again, I mean, that, that just thinking of, you know, Johannesburg traffic, we've been sitting like how long in the mornings and afternoons, and you could shorten that with maybe 15 minutes, and um, at the end of the day, time is money. Absolutely. So, I, I couldn't agree more, and I've been desperately trying to get a, an autonomous car. I don't want to drive through the traffic. I want to sit in the back and read the news, make a cup of coffee in the back of the car, well, that's have the thing. my breakfast. For, for autonomous car, besides the fact that you get to drink your coffee, it solves everything. It solves traffic problems there and then. Imagine you've, got a, you've only got autonomous cars on the road and they're all talking to each other. Suddenly now you don't have traffic lights anymore. You don't have stop mm-hmm. anymore. Your car's actually all coordinating with each other. When they get there, they just pass between each other. don't have speed limits take, anymore. Take the humans out okay. of the equation. I mean, talking of speed limits, I mean, how lovely is uh, Tesla's idea of sending us all underground in our cars in tunnels at 
you know, 200 k's an hour from one side of Johannesburg to the other side, and he's doing it. Absolutely, while smoking joints. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, we it's we, we, the topic we, of the week, yeah. isn't it? Uh, our, our last topic was about uh, cannabis, <laughs> and I think uh, <laughs> automation is going to solve a hell of a lot of problems. But yeah, I, I, th- I think uh, the, the the Tesla underground and these these autonomous cars is absolutely the way of the future. I want it, and you get these guys. Oh, but I still want to drive. In what what <laughs> world are you mental? Doing nine k's an hour or nine k's a week on the M1 to work in the morning for three hours—that's not driving. That's a stress test gone out of control. It's ridiculous. So if um, 13 to 18 year olds uh, they want to get in, into this, they want to get into making drones, they want to get into tech. They want what are what must they do? What what are the subjects? What avenues must they pursue? It's one of those things. That it's like once to be an engineer, it has to be in you from the beginning. You have to be that kid who was who was at home at ten years old, destroying all of his parents' equipment, pretending he's going to put it back together, and all that. You have to be that kind of person. And the nice thing with the drones is a lot of the equipment is available online. I'm referring to the motors, the the flight controllers, and so forth. So you find that kids from 13 to 15 are already building their own drones. A big thing at the moment in South Africa, especially, is uh, FPV racing, first-person view racing. Yeah. The idea where your drone actually, where you built yourself a little drone, um, anyway, is about 300 grams you've got a camera in the front of it and you as a pilot are actually wearing virtual reality goggles yeah. so you see what the camera's seeing and it's just like an episode of something from Star Wars I mean, you're, you're racing between the trees you're race, racing under wow. bridges over things it's a fantastic way to fly so the kids are already doing that and by the time they, they start approaching university um, they pretty much know that they probably want to go into the um, into mecha- mechatronic side of things and that's a really nice new field in, in engineering in the old days we used to kind of had like electrical and we had mechanical engineering and so forth in fact in my days definitely whereas these days mechatronics that's the, co- the combination of everything we've thrown in computer programming we've thrown in electronics we've thrown in me- mechanical design we've thrown in a bit of aero it even sounds awesome it's brilliant mechatronics <laughs> so what do you say I study mechatronics do yeah. you I wow. will the students it's a really difficult co- course but it's worth it you can do anything after that fantastic the thing is, sorry, and, and, and just to like elaborate on that, I mean, we, we live in South Africa, and I mean, this is something that I, I find that, you know, working with, with kids a lot, is that um, we got people with different skills and different um, interests. You know, I mean, you find that people are, you might find people that are more interested in working with their hands. Some people prefer to do programming. Some people are more interested in the mathematical aspects of things. And so, you know, you, you don't have to necessarily... Um, it's not like everybody has to go to university to yeah. be able to get involved with drones. There's, and with all the technology in that, that we're going into, different people are going to be able to use their different skills at different levels yeah. because that is still needed in terms of the research development, in terms of the production lines, in terms of um, you know, making these drone technologies or anything in industry working. Are there any, nice point. any, any, any uh, points along, the, along this value chain that they are lacking? Uh, I always go back to the fact that um, artisans are in serious, serious uh, trouble in this country today. Um, many years ago, I did a, uh, an article that stated that the average age of the artisan was around 59. Mm. And that, that was for your qualified boilermakers, the guys with the papers, who the journey. And I, it meant that in, within six or seven years, we would have no more artisans. You exactly. Know? So are, are you finding that the, the artisanal skills... Uh, are, are dying out or is it making a resurgence because this is a sexy thing to, to become involved with well it's actually um, it is a, there is a big need for it and because of that it's um, amazing to actually see the salaries that, the, that those people are able to get these days they do um, because and so the thing is though is um, it's and again they've got the passion to work with their hands to solve problems to um, you know put things together and um, in a way they've actually got a uh, in my personal opinion, they've got a bit of an advantage, you know, um, because they're able to see there's a problem and they've got to actually solve the problem on the spot. Yeah. Um, it's not like they've got some time to go and do research, they've got to, you know, go and check on Google and stuff. They actually have to, um, you know, know what they're talking about, solve the problem, put something to get together, something almost like a bush engineering Good method. Good technical skills. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, this challenge is probably a good example of that. I mean, we've got some very qualified people sitting over the booth and please come visit. Um, but even this morning, I found someone asking me, you know, where's this component? And it's so nice you're upset. No, you have to make that component. <laughs> <laughs> and then they kind of think, bugger, I wish we didn't have, didn't just have three university guys. Yeah. I wish we had like, the hands-on guy as well. So, yeah, definitely still place for them. And, yeah, they, they are involved in drones. Okay. So, so even in the lab, we've, we've got, I don't know, like you now, I think about five uh, unqualified students that we've actually brought in purely for hands-on type skills. And, and they're doing great. Absolutely love it. Guys, this is the future. I think we've got to wrap it up. 
Um, thank you so much, so much. I am absolutely blown away by the tech, and you guys saying that there is a resurgence in the tech in South Africa. So it is a, it's a sort of a future-proof uh, skill and uh, job that you can go into. Uh, where can guys get a hold of you? Where can guys get more information? Okay, well, from our side, you can go to the uh, mandela.ac.za website and type in drones in the search bar there, and you'll find our website. Uh huh. Uh, for myself, um, I think um, I've got quite a, f- a few different um, social media platforms that I'm, I'm exploring in terms of research specifically that I'm involved with. Um, on Facebook, there's the stuff with Mechatronics Robotics Research Lab. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I'm Google Plus. So there's different areas, and it's always interesting just to encourage kids in that way in terms of this is what we're doing in South Africa. We are not that um, disadvantaged in technology, and um, we are actually developing the future and making changes. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much, guys. For uh, what, What's the are you at? What's um, stand number? Don't, uh, don't technology stand. I don't think we've actually got stand numbers, but right at the end of the hall. Okay, right at the end of the hall. Come give them a visit. And uh, hopefully uh, we can chat to you guys a little bit later in the year and see how things are coming along. Awesome. Fantastic. Great. All right. That was Drones. We're going to be back in a few minutes with our next guest, hopefully. Uh, please don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Africa Biz Radio, Facebook Africa Business Radio, hashtag HRY. Drop us an email, info at africabusinessradio.com, or go download our app at the App Store, at the Play Store, the iStore, and all those good stores. You can take us wherever you go and interact with us, send us messages. We really appreciate it. Exploring the African narrative, leading the conversation, and enlightening our listeners. Africa Business Radio, towards a profitable Africa.